Not the Purple Positivity Podcast. What am I talking about? Shit, it's the Purple Lit Nerd Podcast for May the 5th, 2018. Happy Cinco de Mayo. I am your host, the amazingly adorable Rebecca Thistle, podcasting to you live-ish from my kitchen slash dining room table in my apartment, which I call Jeffrey Thistlework. Yay! So... I have to start this show out. I'm very excited, and I'm I'm... I have to start this out with a couple of things. Number one, it's probably going to get a little rambly because I get really excited talking about the Iron Druid Chronicles. I know. And number two, spoiler alert. If you haven't read the books, fucking go read them. Just, just go now. Get them on audio. I mean, I know that's a lot of money, but still, go get them on audio because Luke Daniels. The end. <laughs> that's the end of that. That's that's the only reason, Luke Daniels. <laughs> oh my gosh. If it were possible to have sex with a voice, I probably shouldn't finish that sentence. But if you haven't read the books, go read them. They're really good. They're they're really great. Uh, but if you, if you're the kind of person that cares about spoilers, I generally don't. Um. Go read, go read the books. Stop listening right now. Uh, Iron Druid Chronicles, Kevin Hearn, go get them on audio. Luke Daniels, the end. <laughs> Otherwise, don't complain to me because I ruined something for you, all right? It's nine books in the series and a few, like, novellas that are really good. I haven't read the novellas yet. I'm working on it. Don't judge me. Hashtag don't judge me. <laughs> But yeah, it seems like a lot, but it is really, it's a really fun read and it's a really fast read. At least the first three books are. Um, but it, but it's a really enjoyable um, journey that you take because it's awesome. So, so it's going to be rambly, number one. I don't apologize for it because I'm the amazingly adorable Rebecca Thistle. This is why you listen to me. I hope. <laughs> and so I get rambly and, and, and I geek out and I go all over the place. And number two, spoiler alert, okay? I'm going to be giving away a lot of plot points, a lot of information, okay? And so if you don't like it, I'm sorry, go now. Bye. Don't let the door hit you where the good Lord split you. All right? Right. Okay. So... Iron Druid Chronicles. Atticus O'Sullivan is my soulmate. My fictional soulmate. He's... He is such a flawed character, but I just go, I want to, like... No, it's not necessarily that I want to fix him. It's just I want to, like, beat him over the head and 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 blank his brains out. <laughs> but, uh, that's, that's neither here nor there. So, okay, first book. Hounded. Hounded is the first book. And it is, because it is the first of nine novels, it is the book that lays the groundwork. So, this is going to be a really weird show because I'm, I'm, I don't have an outline because there's so much to unpack with this book series so much and so I'm just like okay I'm gonna start with just like let's do the one book at a time one book at a time um and and then go from there so Hounded lays a lot of groundwork 
So, but before I get into what's actually in the book, I feel like I have to talk a little bit about the universe, world, whatever, in which this takes place. <clears throat> and that is, um, and that, and that kind of requires me giving a nod to Neil Gaiman because um, if you've been a long listener of this show, first of all, I'm sorry, but I never pretended like I'm good at this shit. You know that the first um, the first book I, I covered on this show was actually American Gods, and I'll probably cover it again in the future because I'll go back to it and I'll listen to it and I'll notice something else and I'll go, oh shit, I want to talk about that on the Purple Lit Nerd podcast and then there we go. And then we'll revisit it because it's it's just, it's it's such a good book. It really is. But I didn't actually read that book until um, a year after I'd gone through the first eight books in the series because the ninth book just came out last month. But the reason I have to give a nod to American Gods and Neil Gaiman is, number one, there is a part, and I think it's actually in the third book, which is Hammered, um, where Atticus remarks that his favorite author is Neil Gaiman. So I, I have a feeling that was Mr. Kevin Hearn inserting himself in the story <laughs> a little bit. For good reason. That's that's not a criticism. Like, you know what? I would do the same thing. And, uh... So, but... The reason that I have to do that and, and give a nod to American Gods is because the idea of, of what world this story takes place, in which the story takes place, is that human belief has creative powers. So... All the gods are real. All of them are real. All of them. Norse, Greek, Roman, Irish, Slavic, Japanese, Chinese, whatever. Like I'm, I'm various African gods, etc., etc. They're all fucking real, and they're made real because humans believe in them, and pray to them, and worship them. Etc. 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 So that's that's the groundwork for this. Is that all the gods are real, and that is by no means a new idea. That I I don't think that that's an idea that started with Neil Gaiman, but I think it was made. mainstream I guess would be the way to say it by American gods so just saying huh airplane <laughs> you gotta love like the low quality of this show right so <clears throat> American gods I can I can see the heavy influence. Like I said, I didn't I didn't actually read American Gods until after I'd read the first eight books, or I should say, listen to because uh, I do audiobooks. But when I did, I went, oh, so that's where Hearn got his all all his ideas. Okay, groovy, and you know, and 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 maybe it was a good thing because uh, knowing the kind of like snotty little snit that I am. Especially in the first, like, three books, I would have been like, this is so derivative. You know, because that's how I sound. I sound like a valley girl. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah. But that's that's the universe in which it takes place, okay? So, now that I've said that, um, Atticus O'Sullivan, the protagonist, is a 2000 some odd year old druid who looks like he's in his early 20s yum <laughs> um he is living in 
Tempe, Arizona, and running an occult bookshop. Now, over the past 2,000 years, give or take, he has been running away from one of the Irish gods that he pissed off. Uh, the god of love, ironically. Actually, not so ironically, because love makes you go crazy. So, you know, there you go. But Angus Og is the name of this god. So Atticus, his given name, Sheahan, which I like better. <laughs> Sheahan O'Sullivan has been, um, has been running from Angus Og for 2,000 years. Because in Angus Og's mind, Sheahan stole a magical sword called Fragara, which <sighs> Freud would have a field day with this, okay? Atticus, on the other hand, says, you know what, bitch? Finders keepers. I mean, that's not what he actually says, but he should have said it because that's just awesome. Meanwhile, the uh, Irish chooser of the slain, death goddess, the Moor again, is on Sheahan's side, Atticus's side, and uh, so, and she has helped Atticus escape Angus Og for millennia because love and death hate each other, apparently. That's always something interesting to kind of like, hmm, that's oddly symbolic and philosophical. I should think about that more, but I'm in the middle of a podcast, so I best not. <clears throat> so, <laughs> and I mean, I, I, I want to do an entire show, one, once I unpack all these novels, um, I want to do an entire show just, just about the Morgan, because that's, that's a really, she's a really interesting character to, to, to examine. But, uh, yeah, so Atticus has been running from Angus Og for 2,000 years with the help of the Morrigan and has landed in Tempe, Arizona and sort of set up camp um, because it's in the middle of Arizona and the Fae from the Irish Plain are, cannot easily access him. And... And he sort of gets a little complacent in the, in the meantime. He gets a little complacent and doesn't think things through, uh, you know. And so, but meanwhile, so this is all laying groundwork. So in, in, in this life, the story opens with he's got, he's, he's, he's running a, an occult bookshop in Tempe. With a Cody Fingers apothecary's counter in the corner where he sells proprietary herbal tea blends. And uh, with really awesome pun names. Well, I mean, they're terrible puns, but I love them because they're awful. <laughs> I love awful puns. I really do. Um, so, for example... He uh, has one for his more elderly customers who have like arthritis and stuff going on, and that helps with joint pain and, and joint flexibility. And he calls it mobility. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's so awesome and it's so stupid and I love it. But um, yeah, so he he sells occult books to stupid college kids who want to piss off their Protestant Judeo-Christian parents while they're away at college. And, you know, but he, but he also does, like, some legit, you know, business with the, you know, actual magical community from time to time. And that's sort of, like, under-the-radar sort of thing. It's, like, some rare books that he's accumulated over the centuries slash millennium. And, uh, 
you know, and so he's, he's, he's doing pretty well. 